Hey, 42 here. Are we alone in the universe? Of all of humanity's most profound ponderings whilst perched on porcelain thrones, that one's probably the biggest. It's also one of the most difficult to answer. As of today, nobody knows if Earth is a singular oasis or simply one amongst countless celestial sanctuaries harboring life. Despite this uncertainty, it's a question worth asking, because for better or for worse, first contact with an alien race would arguably be the most important event in the entire 200,000 year history of our species, surpassing even the invention of the wheel or the discovery of fire. The knowledge that there are other intelligent species out there would fundamentally change what it means to be human irrevocably altering our understanding of both the universe and our place within it. But here's the thing, it might have happened already. And I'm not talking about some Area 51 government conspiracy crap. I mean, we may have already received an unambiguous and well-documented message from the stars. This is the story of the WOW signal, mankind's first contact with aliens, maybe. Surfshark VPN keeps you safe and private by covering up everything you do online. Surfshark VPN lets you travel the world virtually by changing your virtual location. So you can visit websites that might be blocked in your home country. Or if you are physically traveling, Surfshark also lets you connect via your home country so you don't miss out on all your home comforts, such as streaming video content from home that might be blocked whilst you're traveling. There are over 3,200 servers in 100 countries, so anywhere you go, you'll find a server that fits your needs. I like Surfshark VPN's multi-hop feature that lets you put two VPN servers between you and your online destination for even more privacy and security. And I get a lot of use from Surfshark's IP rotator feature, which constantly changes your device's IP address without losing your VPN connection. I often use Surfshark VPN to access my online banking safely, even on public Wi-Fi. There's no chance I would ever do that without a VPN. VPNs also keep your location and download history private so you can send and receive files securely. But quite simply, Surfshark VPN is an essential tool and by using the code 42, you'll benefit from an 83% discount plus three extra months for free. All you have to do is click the special link in the description below. So don't miss out. And thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. On the 15th of August 1977, Jerry Emmon was sitting in his kitchen, scrutinising a substantial stack of seemingly senseless scribblings. Each page was covered in random numbers and letters, as though someone had sneezed on them whilst eating alphabet soup. But as a research scientist with the SETI project, Jerry Emmon's trained gaze could discern this cosmic code because it was data from one of the world's most powerful radio telescopes, nicknamed Big Ear. Unlike regular telescopes that use lenses and mirrors to magnify visible light, telescopes like Big Ear are designed to gather radio signals originating in deep space. And it was this info that was contained in Jerry Emmons' alphabeti spaghetti printouts. Each of the 50 columns represented a different frequency channel, and the numbers and letters within those columns displayed the strength of any incoming radio signals of that frequency. Low numbers meant weak signals, background noise mostly, and high numbers meant stronger signals. The columns were only wide enough for a single character, so signals above a 9 were assigned a letter instead. A meant a signal strength of 10, B 11, C 12, and so on. Jerry had searched through literally thousands of pages like these during the four years Big Ear had been hunting aliens without finding anything of particular interest. But on that fateful day in 1977, his eye was drawn to a signal that looked like nothing he'd ever seen before. 6EQ UJ5, an alphanumeric string so startling that Jerry circled it in red pen and scribbled the now famous wow, wow annotation. The so-called wow signal had several attributes that made it so remarkable. To start, it was a staggering 30 times stronger than background radio noise. It had also only registered in one of Big Ear's 50 frequency channels, meaning it's what we will call a narrowband signal. Narrowband radio signals aren't typically made by natural sources. They're generated 
by technology. As soon as he saw the signal, Jerry Emin knew that he might be looking at humanity's first contact with aliens. But as Carl Sagan once said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. The first thing the SETI team had to do was make sure the wow signal really was something extraordinary. Observing the world for a radio telescope is a notoriously finicky business for the simple reason that radio waves are absolutely bloody everywhere. A ceaseless cacophony of cosmic clamour, including stars, black holes and quasars, constantly emit radio waves like drunk gunslingers in an intergalactic saloon. Closer to home, terrestrial technologies also rely on radio waves, like TVs and telephones, only compounding the chaos. If anyone was going to take the wow signal seriously, it had to be demonstrated that it hadn't come from any of these other sources. Galactic radio noise could be swiftly eliminated because the wow signal was far too strong. Other natural phenomena like stars and quasars could also be ruled out because they emit radio waves across a wide range of frequencies, not a single narrow band. They also tend to emit them constantly over millions, even billions of years. But when Big Ear listens to that same section of sky the following night, the mysterious signal was gone. Finally, interference from Earth-based technology also seemed extremely unlikely. The WOW signal traced an unmistakable bell-shaped curve, matching the expected signature of a space-based source passing directly over the telescope. Earth-based interference, on the other hand, typically produces sporadic pulses. So, the signal was seemingly artificial and came from the cosmos. That must mean it was aliens, right? Well, not necessarily. The scientists first had to confirm that the signal hadn't come from our own radio wave producing space-based technology, satellites. It didn't take them long. You see, in the late 70s, fewer than 300 satellites orbited Earth and none of them were supposed to be nearby on the night in question. Moreover, Big Ear's data showed that the WOW signal source was stationary relative to the stars. In other words, to have produced a wow signal, one of the fewer than 300 satellites in existence would have had to have been in exactly the right part of the sky, at exactly the right time, moving in exactly the right direction, at exactly the right speed, to match the motion of the stars around it. In my book, that's pretty conclusive. But the evidence against the satellite theory doesn't stop there. You see, it wasn't just the strength and signature of the WOW signal that was so unusual, it was also the frequency it was resonating at, 1420 MHz. That's incredibly close to something called the hydrogen line, the frequency at which hydrogen atoms naturally emit radio waves. The significance of that seemingly random coincidence might not be immediately obvious, so let me explain. Hydrogen, the cosmos's most copious element, is so abundant that sensitive radio telescopes are able to detect its perpetual radio hum everywhere. Thus, tuning our telescopes to this particular frequency unveils a wealth of knowledge about the fabric of the universe. Succinctly put, 1420 MHz is arguably the single most important radio frequency for any young civilization seeking cosmic comprehension. Chances are, if we're listening to it, then so is everyone else out there, for the very same reasons. You probably know where I'm going with all of this. Contacting a distant civilization across the boundless expanse of space is a tricky business. There's no way of knowing what languages they speak, even what sense organs they might possess. But the hydrogen line is universal. Any alien wanting to be heard would be wise to transmit at 1420 MHz. For this and other reasons, 1420 MHz is an internationally protected radio frequency reserved solely for scientific research. Nobody else is allowed to use it. Going back to the satellite theory for a second, to have produced the WOW signal, not only would a satellite need to have been in the right part of the sky at the right time, moving in the right direction at the right speed, it would also need to have been transmitting on an illegal frequency. So, it was clear the Y signal wasn't the result of interference or misidentification, nor a malfunction. The telescope was tested thoroughly and no issues were found. 
Plus, it would have been a hell of a coincidence of a random instrumentation error perfectly replicated the exact signal researchers were seeking. So, to summarise, the WOW signal was a narrowband radio signal that, so far as we know, must have been generated by some kind of technology. It originated in space, it wasn't the result of Earth-based interference, and it was sent on a very specific frequency that we believe aliens might use to contact us. All of this leads me to one pretty obvious question. Why the f*** isn't the WOW signal considered to be the most important scientific discovery in the history of the human race? Well, that rather rude question has a very simple answer. Since that fateful day in 1977, the WOW signal has never been detected again. We scoured the skies with far bigger and better telescopes than Big Ear, but almost 50 years on, and there's been nothing, not a whisper. Until we verify the signal through a second observation, doubts will always linger about its nature and origin. True, nobody has provided a compelling non-alien explanation, but that doesn't automatically mean there isn't one. We may just have missed something. Or perhaps the signal was generated by some kind of natural phenomenon that we haven't discovered yet. Without more data from further observations, it's impossible to say for sure. As the years pass without the return of the WOW signal, doubt steadily seeps in. After all, if this was the interstellar equivalent of ET slipping into our DMs, why suddenly cut the transmission? It's also worth mentioning that Big Ear detected no modulation of the signal, meaning, so far as we can tell, there was no actual information encoded within it. Again, why? If an alien intelligence went to all the trouble of getting in touch across the galaxy, wouldn't it have made sense to actually say something? Almost 50 years on from the detection of the WOW signal, it continues to both fascinate and frustrate the scientific community. Back in 2017, an astronomer of somewhat dubious credentials claimed to have traced a signal back to a couple of previously uncatalogued comets enveloped in radio wave emitting hydrogen gas clouds. Several astronomers what? with significantly more impressive credentials soon pointed out that the comets in question wouldn't have been in the right part of the sky when the WOW signal was recorded. And even if they had been, comets don't produce the right kind of radio signals in the first place. In short, it was a bust. But the fact the story made headlines around the world shows that people are still intrigued by this most mysterious missive. More recently, as we've begun to map our galaxy in greater detail, astronomers have attempted to pinpoint the exact star system from which the WOW signal might have originated. During a 2020 survey, Spanish astronomer Alberto Caballero identified 66 stars in the Sagittarius constellation as possible candidates. Work is already underway to search these stars for signs of life. Will we find an advanced civilization orbiting one of them? Wondering why the hell it's taking us so long to reply to their voicemail message? Only time will tell. After recording the WOW signal, the Big Ear Telescope continued its search for extraterrestrial life until 1995, making it the longest running SETI project ever conducted. In the 22 years Big Ear patiently listened to the radio wave whispers of the universe, it never detected anything remotely similar to the WOW signal again. Which to this day, remains one of science's greatest enigmas. Thanks for watching.